This video, we will start working on our big data application, DVC schedule. We will read the data from the text file, DVC schedule.txt file. That is almost 5 megabyte. And from our lab exercise we work on this week, you can see we have almost 90,000 lines. And each line, including one section, one course section from year 2000 for all the courses we offer in DVC. In our big data application, we have two tasks we need to work on in assignment 5. The first one, you need to find out how many duplication from this text file. Then the second thing, you need to find the total section for each subject code. For example, from year 2000 until 2020 spring, how many computer science courses we offer. So actually we talk about is how many sections. And also you need to display all the subject code with their total section from year 2000 in an alphabetic order. So that's the two tasks we need to work on for our big data section. So one thing is let's think about how should we do the approach. So the first thing, what is duplication? So the duplication actually like we say each line. Here is the example for the DVC schedule. So you can see each line we have couple uh, we have few tokens. The first one is the semester, that including the semester and the year. The second one is the section number. Then we have the course. Then we have instructor and the location and the when. So after we do the parsing from lab exercise five, we know we break the each line into token. So the first one is turn. The second one is section. So when we say we have a unique section, that means in a semester, they have their unique section. So that's why when we read the whole file, when we consider is the duplication is, you have the same semester and you have the same section number. So the first time I see 4, 2005, 1773, this one is the first section show up with the turn and the specific section. So when you have the first time you see this section, we don't consider they are duplicate. However, after you pass, process all the line, then you find out you have another section with the same, same turn and the section number, then we will consider they are the duplicate. So that's the definition about our duplication. So the duplication actually is we need to store the turn information and concatenate the section number. We need to store them in the array. Then we will every time we read a line, then we will compare our existing array. Do we have this turn and section number exists from this array? If there has one already in the array. That's a duplication. So on the other hand, what we should do is you should define a static array or a dynamic array. So this static array or dynamic array, your decision. Uh, so later we will see, should we do the static array or dynamic array? Because so far you have two header files you can use. But no matter which one you want to use, what we should do is when we declare this array, Remember, you have capacity, but you have no information at all. So that's why what we will do find the duplication is we should read line by line. So the first line we will check they have no duplication. So that's why we save in the array. Then the second line after I parsing line before I will store in the array, I will check this new turn and the section, are they exist 
in the current data for the array. If it did exist, then that's a duplication. So then actually any duplication we will skip, do not store in our array. So that's the duplication check. So you can see one thing is we need to have a very, very big array. This array will contain almost 90,000 entry because one thing is you know in our DVC schedule we have 90,000 line and so far you have no idea how many duplicate section will exist so we know that at least it's not a small number array so good so at the same time you can check each line is there duplicate or not and also we told you you have the second task you need to find the total section for each subject code. So on the other hand, from now on, when I read one line, after I know this line is not duplicate line, I should save the subject information. For example, now if I read a math 191, then I need to store this new section into the math subject code. So you see here, you need to list all the total section for each subject. So on the other hand, right, we need an array. So this array should we be static or dynamic? Then later we will discuss about that. But then no matter which one, we need an array to keep those data. Because one thing is, when I read line by line, you see, when I process one line, I store the information into the array. Then I read another line, I store the data in the array. So that's the reason we want to have an array, right? The reason for the array is we want to reuse those data in the future process. So that's why when I read line by line, I am building up my array. My array content not finish until I process the old line. To help you to understand how you will work on this big data application. So that's why I make that the flow chart to help you to understand. So actually each flow chart, no matter that's condition or a code block, we have a code segment we need to process. So that's focus on the flow chart here first. So this one is like we say, we have two parts for our big data. So actually the first one is the duplicate check. So that's the duplicate check. Okay, so this part is the duplicate check. So then after you finish the duplicate check, so then we need to put in the subject code. So here is the subject code. So that's focused on duplicate check first. So here we will have the duplicate check. So one thing is when we do the duplicate check, remember we need to open our input file. So then input file, we have the while loop to process line by line. So one thing here is when you read a line, we need to parse that into the token. Remember how many token we have, right? The token we have turn, we have section number, we have the class code, we have instruction. So those things, that's the token we need to save. But here, when we do a duplicate check, the duplicate check, actually what I need is the term plus section number. So that's why here is our class code. So our class code actually is our term plus our section number. So like I say, then I need to using this class code to do the duplicate check, right? So how should I do the duplicate check? Right, remember, I need to know this new line I read is duplicate or not. That's me. The previous line I read, I need to save that in an information. So that's why here, when we compare the new class code for the duplicate check, I need to have all the previous line, if they are not duplicate check, duplicate. If they are not duplicated, I need to save them in the array. So this array actually is this one. The array should be string data type. Why? Because the data is turn plus section. That's only a string. 
So this array we call non-duplicate classes. Okay, so then the second question is, do we want to use the static array or dynamic array? So what's different between static array and dynamic array? The basic fundamental differences between our static array and dynamic array we implement is the memory they used. So we need to be careful. When we talk about dynamic array, your array safe in the heap memory. But if you create a static array, your static array will save in the stack memory. So that's the thing we need to consider. So usually if your data is really small, fine, yeah, static array, dynamic array doesn't match it. But now you should know, when we continue to do the duplicate check, we possibly have 85,000 lines. So 85,000 line actually means 85,000 string. So string is the data, is the object. So then we can just save the memory location. However, 85,000 is really a big number. So that's why here we decide we prefer to use a dynamic array. That's because actually we are working with the big data. So that's why sometimes your stack memory is not enough, big enough. So then if you want to use static array, it's not mean you cannot, but you need to make some change in the memory to run. So that's why here, let me go back to see when we run the program. So actually when we decide, when we want to store our 85,000 line in the array, which one we should use? It really depends on the memory, how much memory we need to use. So we see, for example, if each array element, remember like earlier I showed you, when we do the duplicate check, your element is a string. So your string here, if you have the static object to save, then you need to consider your class code. Your class code actually is turn plus section number. So the turn actually, for example, we say that's the spring 2019. So then you have the section number one, two, three, four. So actually there are, each character is a byte. So that's why sometimes you need to calculate to see how big is your string. So then we just say, for example, if we say that's a red element is 100 bytes. So then actually 85,000 times 100 bytes, they are almost like 8.5 megabytes. But one thing is when we run our program by default, Oh, by default, remember, by default, if you learn from Consign 260 assembly language, we told you by default, by default, when you run a program, operating system actually is offer you only one megabyte stack memory. So on the other hand, if you need to run for the eight megabytes in the stack memory, it's not enough. So your stack memory is not enough, right? So that's why you have, actually you have a couple different ways you can do that, right? So one thing is you can decide since the stack memory is too small. So then I decide to use the dynamic memory. So that's, we will save our array in the heap memory instead of the stack size, stack, stack memory. Otherwise here in the reading, we show you this way is in the command line how you will enlarge your stack memory. Operating system default give you one megabyte. Oh, but one thing is you can make the change. Uh, so then here is the example, if you want to enlarge your stack memory from one megabyte to 100 megabytes, that's how we command line do. But one thing is since you run from your IDE, you need to check how your IDE will enlarge your stack memory. Okay, so that's we will explain why we're using the dynamic map, dynamic array for this example. Uh, the reason is, one thing is the stack memory may not enough for the array we want to save. Then the second thing is, so far I didn't know how many duplicate the array element we have. 
we only know we have at least 85,000.